everybody please close your eyes and think along with me. Just close your eyes and think, if together we can put a dent in the universe of fear, anger, and unhappiness, I'm in. And if you're in, raise your hand and then open your eyes. Anybody here know of someone who's manipulative? <laughs> I didn't know it was a, co a comedy act. Uh, how about someone who's really manipulative? How about someone you dread getting a call from or dread getting a call from the police for something that they did? Well, that's what happened to my good friend John regarding his daughter who was a drug addict at age 23. Some time ago, John came up to me and said, you know, I can't stand getting a call from her because she always lies, she's always manipulating, and I, and I just resent her, and I'm afraid that I'm gonna say something that's gonna push her over the edge and do something crazy. But I know I'm making things worse. And then one day he said to me, you know, I know there's something that makes her smile every day. Could be a shower, could be a slice of pizza, could be scoring some drugs, but there's gotta be something. So what John told me he started doing is, I started texting her every day at 5 p.m. I got ahead of the curve, so rather than dreading the call from her, I would text her every day at 5 p.m. It was always the same text. Hey, honey, it's Dad. What made you smile today? At first, she was countering my manipulation, he said, uh, with, oh, I thought you'd give me money. Help me out. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. We've been down that road before too many times. No money, no help until you get your act together. And he just kept doing it day after day. And then he told me about six weeks later, he texted her, hey honey, it's dad, what made you smile today? And, he got, and the text he got back was, oh, come on dad, if you must know, knowing that you'd text me today. Exactly, and John got tearful. He said it was the first conversation we had where I actually liked her, and she liked me. And then he told me that two months later she was off drugs getting her act together. I said, what do you think it was? And he said, I think it's the what made you smile today text. And I said, well, what do you mean? Well, I actually like her. You know, I don't resent her, I don't dread her, and I have a feeling that my liking her made her feel as good as the drugs, so she's off the drugs. And I think that's what did it. You know, you don't have to be a drug-using daughter to have a smile break through your mood and addiction indulgence, quiet desperation. And since John told me that, I've decided to try it out. So one of the things I've been doing is I've noticed these name tagged faceless people, and you know them, the cashiers at Costco, McDonald's, the TSA agents, they have, they have name tags because they're supposed to be friendly, but they're one down, they don't know our name. So what I've been doing every day since then, is I'll go up to them, and if it's not crowded, I want to make sure they're not stressed, and I say the same thing. So this happened with Carmen, actually, a couple weeks ago at McDonald's. I saw that there wasn't uh, too many people behind us. She served me, and I said, Carmen, my name's Mark. So I leveled the playing field, person to person. She has a name, I have a name. I said. Thank you, Carmen. Just a thank you made her pull back. And I said, Carmen, I have a question for you. She went like this. And I said, no, you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Carmen, what made you smile today? And since I've been doing it, people will say, oh, I got up today, uh, going to work, uh, my child, my dog. And Carmen told me one of my favorites. She looked right at me, had this huge smile, and she said, seeing you, sweetie. <laughs> And I said, I have never had a Happy Meal like that. You know? <laughs> and, and so what I've been doing is, I, I said, you know, Carmen, you have a great smile. And so we, we're still, we have a nonprofit, uh, and it's called hashtag WMYST. What made you smile today? And so what I've been doing is I carry these wristbands around. And I said, Carmen, it's a wristband. You have a great smile. This will remind you to smile every day, and here's a second one. Give it to someone else. Try to someone else what we just did. 
see, uh, see how it spreads. You know, and I'll tell you another place that I've discovered that works and how this can change things for you. So I was on a tech call with someone, I think in India, you know, fixing some tech problem that's way above my pay grade. And it was a frustrating call for me, but they were very patient. And we finally got it figured out. And you know, then they said, you know, do you have any more questions? And I said, are you a robot or are you a human being? And they said, no, I'm a human being. And uh, it was a rule. And I said, a rule, I have a question for you. No, no, you're not in trouble. I guess everybody has the same paranoia when you say, I have a question for you. And he said, what is it, sir? I said, what made you smile today? And he said, it's my birthday. And I said, what's going to happen? He said, my family's going to celebrate. I'm getting off in a couple hours. And I said, that is amazing. Congratulations. And then we kept talking for about two more minutes. And I said, give me your supervisor's name, because you've just been terrific. So you know, I, from a frustrated guy who's going to write a recommendation, what the heck happened? So I've been trying to figure out what goes on with this thing. And I think it's four things. First thing, when you go name to name, they go from an appliance or a function to a person. You level the playing field, because normally it's like this, lopsided. Second thing is they get to tell you something that they enjoyed, and they get a second hit of that enjoyment. Third thing is they're grateful to you. And I don't know about you, but some days I go, and there's not much gratitude surrounding me. <laughs> And so they're grateful to you. They smile at you. You smile at them. But here's the thing that I think really happens. You get to get outside your self-absorption. You know, we're all so self-absorbed. We're preoccupied. Uh, and, and, and I don't know about you, but when I'm really preoccupied, it triggers a little bit of shame. Years ago, as mentioned in the introduction, I was a practicing psychiatrist, psychotherapist. And something I would do with my depressed and anxious patients, I would sometimes write a prescription, and I would say, go out and do something for someone who is less than you. This is before the What Made You Smile campaign. And I would give them sometimes boxes of little healthy treats. And i say, when you see a homeless person, Go up to them, and if you're afraid to give them money because you're afraid they'll spend it on drugs or alcohol, go up to them and identify yourself. Say, my name's Mark, what's your name? You know, the homeless have names. I, I don't know if you knew that. They have names, they talk. And, and give them the healthy treat. See what happens, come back. So a week later, uh, they come back, and nearly all of them would say, I feel better. And I think my clinical observation is that there's a lot of depressed and anxious people who, when you drill down, they say, you know, maybe I don't deserve to be happy because all I think about is myself. All I care about is myself. Nobody else. And so I, I think by doing this, this gets you out of yourself. Shame goes away. You feel like you made the world a little bit happier. You know, I frequently speak to teenage groups on stress, depression, anxiety. And you know the suicide epidemic is, is horrendous. And it's, it's over the top. Uh, and it certainly freaks me out and is very upsetting. And so recently I spoke to a group of teenagers. And you know, I'm kind of like an old fogey, and you know, just trying to break the ice, and you know, kind of like a little bit like I did with you, but you were much easier than teenagers. And so I said to them, I said, um, I'm going to try a social experiment. You know, they weren't as easy as all of you. I mean, you just came in, so a social experiment sounded like something I could get there buying. And I said, I'd like you to all stand up. Go over to someone that you don't know, especially the shy people. Introduce yourself. Say your name first, then ask them their name. And then ask them, what made you smile today? And you know, if any of you have teenagers, you know they weren't exactly chomping at the bit. And I said, come on, come on, come on. You know, I, you know, I have a talk to give. I'm not going to give it till you do it. Up, 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 come on, come on. You know, then a couple people got up, a couple more people. And you know what happened, of course. I couldn't shut them up. <laughs> no, really, they were so bottled up, and, and they're talking, and they're laughing, and what made you smile? 
you know, and, 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 I, I, and I said, shh, shh, no, I gotta finish my talk. You know? uh, and I'll tell you something, because someone said, well, isn't that the same thing as a gratitude exercise? And I don't think it's the same, because I don't know about you, but sometimes when you say to someone, you know, why don't you be more grateful? It feels like you're shaming them. Doesn't it feel like you're saying to them, you know, you should be more grateful, especially to me? <laughs> you know, they're not too big on it. And so, so they did that, and then they, you know, finally settled down, and they were different. They were different. So now as I'm getting towards the end of my talk, and I'm the final talk, and you've had these energizer things, you know what I'm going to ask all of you, don't you? <laughs> I was expecting you to groan. Well, you know, we have to thank AG for getting you all enlivened. So what I would like you to do is when I finish, maybe that'll be the final energizer, and then we can see what's next. I want you to go up to someone that you don't know. And here's the deal. You break the ice and say, yeah, my name's such and such. Uh, you get their name, and then you ask each other, what made you smile today? And if you could do this, if you could do this every day, if you do this every day for a week, and also get some of those healthy snacks and give them to the homeless people if you're afraid of giving them money that they'll use for drugs and alcohol. I think if we did this together, don't you agree we'd make the world a little happier one smile at a time? Have I made you smile? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now, under the shadow of night, when I make my escape, get up! Come on, get up! Do it, do it, do it, do it! You'll do it! Go on, introduce yourself to someone else, ask you, what made you smile? 